Hello friends, Coach Bob with you, and today we are going to be talking about getting ready to go on a tour. You know that Coach Vic and I, we're going to be heading out to, um, or down to Key West, Florida. And, oh, I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Anyway, we're going to be heading down to Key West, Florida. And then we're going to leave Key West. We're going to go due north and up to the northern edge, as far north as we can go in Maine. And pop out in Gran Canada. At least that's the plan. Will it work? I don't know. A lot of it's going to have to do with gas costs and the economy and the viral situations and all of that good stuff because we just don't know what the future holds like no one else. So what do we do? We plan for it. And trust me when I tell you, if something happens and we can't do that trip, we will make a trip. Don't you ret don't you worry your pretty little head about that. We're, we're going somewhere and we're gonna take you along and it's gonna be awesome, I guarantee you that. So what are five things that we can do brass tacks right down to it let's not dawdle brass tacks five things that you can do to get physically prepared these are things that don't cost you a nickel you just have to do your thing you have to get ready and you have to work hard to get this stuff so let's talk about that and how that works out so the first thing you got to do numero uno is not get killed by the guy in the car right there <laughs> wave to him that way they feel bad when they kill you. So the first thing you have to do is you gotta get lean. How lean do you have to get? No, I'm not talking 8%, 6%, 5%. We're not talking bodybuilding, we're not talking that. But you need to try to lose any unwanted weight. Unwanted weight does a lot of things. Number one, if you get hot, unwanted weight is brutal. Raises your blood pressure, makes your heart work a little bit harder, all of that stuff. So you really need to try to lean up, not just to be pretty, although I'm sure you already are, but you could also make your life a lot easier. I learned this years ago when running, I'll tell you that. Every pound is pretty darn dramatic, so make sure you lean up. At our age, it's more about pushing away from the table when it comes to weight. I say our age, I'm assuming that most of you are 40 to 60 years old. There are a lot of us that are older than that, some much older and some much younger. The younger you are, the more you can outrun your diet. The older you are, uh, you ain't outrunning your diet. You're not getting out that easy. So you have to push away from the table. When I say push away, I do not mean push away and don't eat. I mean push away and look at what you're eating and then decide is this the right thing or not. And if it is, eat it. And if it's not, don't. You wouldn't imagine ever putting diesel fuel in your Can-Am Spider, so don't put junk in your body and you will feel a lot better. All right. Number two. Number two is one that we don't think too much about, and that is flexibility. I'm, I'm a guy that, you know, the one thing I hate more than drinking water is stretching. I hate to stretch. But stretching is important, and it doesn't have to be a lot. You're not trying to be Bruce Lee. You don't have to put your foot over your head, and you don't have to, you know, spider walk with your legs up over your shoulders and all that stuff. We're just talking a reasonable amount of flexibility so that you can do these things when you're riding, and turning, and twisting. Have multiple places to put your feet, like I have my Le Monster No Bad Vibe pedals. You can do all that stuff, move your feet around. My boots unbuckled. How did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's fix that right now. Make sure nothing's behind me. Don't want to get run over by a bus. How'd he get killed? Buckling his boot. <laughs> My goodness. All right. Here we go. All right. But like these No Bad Vibes pedals down here, those things work great. And they are wonderful. They give me a chance to move my leg around. And when I have it out there, I can kind of stretch to the side and do those things. And it will keep you from cramping up and make you feel better. Don't wait until you're cramping to stretch, by the way. You stretch before you cramp, and that way you don't cramp. Aha. Uh -huh. So flexibility is a big deal. You know, just like I said, just a couple of minutes in the morning and a couple of minutes in the evening. 
don't get frustrated if you're not flexible. That's okay. That's why you're stretching. Number three. Oh, this one is always a good one. Strength. You need to do a little bit of strength training. Now, strength training can be anything from a couple of 15-pound dumbbells. Yes, you don't have to have the big heavy ones. To stretch bands. It can be anything. Work out. Get strong. Build those muscles. Now, for me, it's very important because I have to pick Coach Vic up at least eight times a day. That's just getting on and off the motorcycle. Thinking that we won't have any problem in the motel room with a bed that's three and a half feet off the floor or a tub that she can't get into. I'm picking her up normally 12 to 14 times a day uh, when we're on the road. Uh, it's not a big deal, but I won't say her weight, but that's deadlifting that amount of weight 14 times a day. So I have to be very careful and I have to make sure that I am strong enough to be able to do those kinds of things. So strength training is a big deal and something that you don't want to overlook. Um, I know you're just motorcycle riding, you're sitting down, how hard can it be? But really think about your strength training. All right, number four. Yeah, we're moving right along. Number four, endurance. Yes, endurance. The value of endurance is often underestimated and undervalued. But how do you build endurance? Well, you don't have to go out and, you know, join the suffer fest, although there is some merit to that. I love this curve. Um, you build endurance by gradually increasing your distance at the things you do. Here's an example of that. If you wanted to build your endurance, what you do is you get two water bottles. You put one in one pocket and one in the other. You find a greenway, you know, a place with trails, and you go out and you walk away from the trailhead. Or you can even walk in your neighborhood, walk away from your home. When you finish drinking one water bottle, turn around and go back. What you'll eventually find yourself doing is walking further and further before you empty that water bottle out. That means that you're building your endurance up. You're needing less to sustain what you're doing. Endurance may not sound like a big deal, but when you start putting together, you know, eight to 12 hours in the saddle, in the heat, in the cold, in the rain, the emotional stress, the physical stress, endurance is very, very important. Endurance of the body and endurance of the mind. Now, I love endurance. I've done the Ironman twice. And for those who aren't familiar with what an Ironman is, it is a 2.4 mile open water swim. We did ours in the Gulf of Mexico. It is a 112 mile bike ride and a 26.2 mile run. And it's a beautiful thing. The second one I did, I actually did after being kicked in the head so hard that it detached the retina in my left eye. I swam the last mile, rode 112, and ran a marathon with one eye closed. It was a lot of fun, though, I'll tell you. So endurance is near and dear to my heart. It's also near and dear to Coach Vic's heart. We both competed in many, many marathons, so we love that kind of stuff. So when we want to do long days, we really enjoy them. And we enjoy pushing to the level of discomfort. So if you're not comfortable with uncomfortable, you, you definitely, look at that big old bird, man. <laughs> um, pay attention. You know, they had a guy actually hit a bird and break his neck. And he is a quadriplegic. It was in the newspaper a long time ago. But anyway, does happen. Be careful out there. But we're very comfortable with that zone, that zone you get into when you're an endurance athlete. And we like that. So when we do those 10 and 12 hour days, even longer, we're happy. I enjoy 600 mile days. Coach Vic, not so much. 500's kind of her, I'll call it her comfort cap, as I call it. I'm gonna turn around. So yeah, she has kind of a comfort cap, you know, that she goes, that, Bob, that's really all I want to do right there. I, I have no desire to, to do any more than that. But she does well, man. You know, her, her physical abilities to improve are different than ours. And I'll talk about that when I get through the last thing. I got to go get some gas in this thing, don't I? All right. 
So endurance, now number five, last but not least. In fact, I would say of the five, if you could only work on one, this is probably the most important, your core. Sun's gonna be right in our eyes on a ride home, so put your sunglasses on. <laughs> your core. You know, your core is, as I described to the, the young people that I coach, is this very center part of your body. There's a strength in there. And try to imagine, I tell them, a steel rod running through you from your ankle to your knees to your hips, all the way up through your shoulders, up to the very top of your spine. And can you be a steel rod, perfectly vertical? You know, running is a skill. It is not just going around in circles over and over again. There's a skill to it, a posture to it. In everything that you do, your core is absolutely essential to doing it well. And including motorcycle riding, you'll find that when you ride, you have a tendency of your, your hips kind of settle back like that. Your chest comes forward and you just kind of fold up into a ball when you get tired. In fact, you'll find yourself when you're not tired, just kind of riding like that right there. We should be riding like this, upright, fully erect like that. Just like that. Without the proper core strength, you can't do it. And when I say you need to do it, if you're on a 12-hour ride, every time you catch yourself doing this, and I do that, I'll catch myself doing it, sit up. Catch myself doing it, sit up. Don't allow yourself to fall into that trap of just slouching over. The backrest that I have right now, because it's adjustable, has is, is, is been kind of jostled around, thrown in and out of things. But if you were to measure between my back and the backrest right now, there's probably eight inches between me and the backrest. I, in order to touch a backrest, I gotta go way back here. So, you see guys, they ride back like that, they're all laid back, cool like, that's great. I mean, it's great, it's, it's cool, um, but it's not real good for your spine, certainly not good for your awareness. So the more upright you are, and the more strong you are through here, and you have that endurance mindset, your awareness level is going to be up, which makes for a much safer ride. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, and, and that's this. It's the three-letter word, fun. You know, when you're touring, you want it to be fun. It's easy for it to become a grind if you let it. You want to be able to enjoy riding around and doing the things that you want to do. You, want, you don't want to have to stress out, am I going to make it tomorrow? Am I going to get there? You know, you just want to be able to enjoy it. The lower your level of fitness, the less miles you can go. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, limit yourself, know your limitations, work out to make what little ride, even if you say, man, I can only do 300 miles a day, 200 miles a day, whatever it is. If that's all you got, get as fit as you can so that those 200 miles are packed with energy and excitement because you're gonna be faced with cold, heat, rain, early risings, late arrivals, all of that stuff. And there are gonna be times where you're tired and you want to stop, but you can't. Because you know that you have to get to this particular location or it's gonna mess the whole trip up. So there are times where you, you do have to push yourself. And I know that's not always enjoyable, but the more fit you are, the more enjoyable it can be. <laughs> Man, what a beautiful lake that is. Wow. I love this road. I love this road. Morning, noon, and night. I love it. I love it. I love it. So there are five real things that you can do to get prepared for touring. We're going to be talking about a lot of touring things over the next month or two. It won't be every weekend, but they'll be coming up. The first one I thought was the most pressing because this is the one that you can start now. You can start now. And if you don't plan on touring for another two years, you can start now. If your budget is slim and you can't afford to buy anything, you can start now. 
This is one of those things that will make your life better. You know, years ago, they did a survey among folks, older people, and they said, if you could have two things, two things, what would they be? With overwhelming majority, it was this. You ready for it? A happy family and my health. You know, neither one of those things come overnight. They're daily grinds. Yes, they're enjoyable. Your family is a joy. They're a beauty. They're the, they're the wonderment that God has placed in front of you. Your body, a machine that you're responsible for. Take care of it, and it'll take care of you. All right. <laughs> Don't want to start sounding like a coach. <laughs> Do you ever not coach, coach? Nope. I'm always doing something. All right. Until next time, we'll tell you what I want you to do, though. Go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you are most definitely doing it wrong. Now, you go seize the day. I'm going to ride this thing on home. If you want to ride with me, you can. I'm just going to let the camera run and uh, just going to do this. So enjoy the ride.